Welcome back to Get Good. This is episode number four. In the last video, we talked about pushing to and pulling from the remote repository. In this video, we are talking about ignoring files using the .gitignore. Uh, so I suppose let's get straight into it. So between the last video and this video, I have created a virtual environment or have at least tried to, for some reason it's not working properly, but that doesn't matter uh, because by default, obviously these files aren't ignored because we don't have any way to ignore them. So what we can do is we can create a .git ignore uh, file, spelt correctly like that. And then all you need to do within this git ignore file is to specify all the files and the directories that you want to ignore. So if we want to ignore our virtual environment here, we could just do .venv slash, and it will now, you'll see it goes gray on here. And if we do git status, you'll see that just the git ignore is untracked. The venv isn't tracked at all because we've told git to ignore it. If you wanted to ignore a file that you've already tracked on the repository, you'd need to untrack it first uh, and then you would need to uh, ignore it. So if we did the license, for example, you can see that it's still, oh, sorry, that's a, an alias I have. Uh, it's still you know, tracked according to here and you know nothing's changed according to this. So we need to do git uh, remove double dash cached uh, license. And then it's removed the license and you can see it's then deleted uh, because we're no longer storing it. And then once we delete it, it will um, ignore it. You could also do some other fancy things in here. So it takes all sorts of glob expressions. So if you wanted to ignore all of your Py files, you could do so by doing star.py. And now all of your Python files would be ignored. If you wanted to ignore all your Python files in a particular directory, then you could say do, I don't know, uh, directory slash, and then do that. And then this is um, recursively in all subdirectories. Uh, or if you just wanted to do it in that particular directory and you could do something like that. If you wanted to um, ignore all but a particular file, you can do something like .venv uh, like this. And then, you know, if you, if you wanted to include just the activate script, then you could do so using the exclamation mark. You could do all sorts of stuff in here. But ideally, a lot of the git ignore you wouldn't do yourself because if I come over to uh, the, my Firefox window and if I zoom this in a bit so you can actually see it a bit better, uh, there is this website called gitignore.io and this allows you to create gitignore files for particular uh, projects. And you can use this as an API as well. I always tend to just use the web client, uh, but you have a series of things that you can put in and it will uh, generate a, a gitignore for it. So if we had uh, a Python project that we can put in Python, do something like that. If we had a project that worked with data, we can put some data in here. If we had a project that worked in images or databases, um, actually databases, I don't think is on here, but you know, CUDA as an example, or you know, whatever <laughs> most of these things are that I've never heard of. But if we then click create, it then generates a file for us. So we have our data stuff. So it ignores all this stuff by default. We have our images and then it ignores all these image types by default. And actually it goes even further down. And then we have our Python stuff, and then it ignores all these things that you generally don't want to commit into Python uh, projects. So these are all, you know, like development files and, you know, uh, your venv is already in here, so you wouldn't need to add the venv manually if you were to do this. You know, some sort of like, you know, temporary files or cache files or um, like compiled Python bytecode, all that stuff would be ignored using this. So we could simply just copy this into our project. But you can see that nothing has really changed on this sidebar, but now if we were to add, say, a test.csv file into our repository, then it would get ignored by default, which is really cool. So now we can just git, I uh, keep doing that, let's git status. I've got to stop using aliases because it's uh, confusing. So if we wanted to do git or git commit git ignore, uh, oh, I need to add it first, don't I? add git ignore and then git commit uh, adds git ignore like that and then if we wanted to include this test.csv file we still could so we could do a git add dash f test.csv and now this will forcibly add um, this one file to our repository so you can see it's there if we do git status like that it will then track it and then we can add ignored file uh, forcibly. 
like that and it appears in our commit history. But that's all I wanted to talk about in today's video. I'd like to say a huge thank you to my amazing patrons and members on screen now, especially Mazar Rashman the third for being so generous. And I will see you next Monday for whatever we do and next Friday for the next episode in the Get Good series.